Now we will begin the discussion. To begin the discussion, we have uh, two discussants, Professor Cha sang from SNU and Professor Yi hyun -suk from also from SNU. They are also the experts, just like the presenters. So I would like to hear what they think about on the presentation made today. So we will first listen to the discussion of the discussants first. Professor Cha. Good afternoon. As introduced, I am Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering from SNU. Oh, he introduced me as the professor of electron, electrical and computer engineering, but I'm no longer a professor there. But so you may not know about the data science. During the pandemic, we opened um, this, the graduate school of data science, and now I'm working as the dean at this graduate school. So today it's an opportunity for me to introduce this graduate school, so I'm very much pleased. So what I would like to discuss today is that this pandemic will bring about the change in the landscape. So if you look at this slide, it's a graph drawn by the Financial Times a few days ago. And if you look at this slide, the corporate value have increased so much for these top 25 growth companies. And if you look at it, the Amazon, uh, of course, that people have to buy online, so that's why Amazon grew so much. And next, we have Microsoft. And you might think it should be Googled, but it was actually the Microsoft who benefit mostly from the pandemic. The reason for that will be explained later in my presentation. And if I joke, so I uh, thought that I should wear in uh, yellow since the Vice Minister Kim Gang Nib, uh, I heard that he will join us for the forum. So I was uh, thinking I should wear yellow, but looking at what he's wearing, I. I think uh, it will be okay, uh, whatever I'm wearing. And because of the pandemic, the social distancing is being observed and people are working from home. And we are working together via online. And so, of course, you can imagine that Amazon, of course, benefits from the pandemic. Then why is Microsoft growing and benefiting from the pandemic? And think about Microsoft, Excel and the PowerPoints and the words document that you create are all based on this product provided by Microsoft. And when we are collaborating online, that we share such documents. And also, they have the e email, and they also introduced the chat. So those working at corporation, if they would like to charge or the, uh, give an invoice, that you can simply give the invoice uh, via online as well. So Microsoft allowed people to work from home, even if you do not go to work physically. And Microsoft wasn't faring really well, but since 2003, Microsoft changed its, its approach, and in 2007, it changed the CEO, and it tried the cloud, and introduced the cloud service to prepare for the situation like this. And since it was well prepared, he, it, Microsoft was able to turn the crisis into an opportunity. But the problem is, in case of Amazon, that it's dealing with the physical world. It, there are some manufacturers and the delivery involved. And so that the physical world is not really brought in under control because of the pandemic. So the ambient the AI initiative has been initiated uh, by the, some of the major IT companies. So AI chips are embedded into the plants or into the products or the people so that 
the data can be shared in real time. So and beyond AI is being studied by us as well. And if you look at this slide, a yellow part is showing the size of the module, and that's the AI chip. And all the decision making can be made based on the data from that edge AI chips. Then the physical world can be better connected with the digital world. So stu the student, graduate student at my graduate school, to prove that data science works, uh, they have been involved in some study and using the AI chips at the public institutions, our students checked wh whether people are wearing the mask and turned that data into the statistics. And that statistics was used for the, uh, developing the quarantine measures, just like what Director General Chan stated in his presentation. So that will deliver more meaningful the quarantine measures. So within just three months, the students who are not majoring in electrical or computer engineering, just after three months of studying this, they were able to embark on this initiative So the countries and the companies that lead the digitalization will lead the future. And because of the pandemic, that gap will widen even farther in the future. And that will deepening the disparities that we have between those who are digitalized and those who are not digitalized. And that's it for my discussion. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, let me correct my explanations. Uh, he's the head of the data science uh, graduate school. So let me introduce you the next discussant, uh, Professor Hyun Suk Lee. Professor Hyun Suk Lee of Biological Sciences of Seoul National University. As introduced by the moderator, my name is Lee Hyun Suk, and I am a member of the SNU National Strategy Com Committee. And under the committee, uh, I am a part of the research team concerning data-based science. So I am the leader of the team. So first of all, I'd like to uh, thank those on the forefront of uh, taking preventive and control measures against COVID-19. So including uh, Vice Minister Kim and medical staff members, I'd like to express my Thanks to all of them for uh, making an environment where uh, it is uh, safe for me not to uh, wear face mask dur during the uh, presentation. So as a scientist, and I always try to find faults at everything. As you know, that is the uh, nature of the scientist. Even if there is something perfect, you know, I always try to discover the problems and issues and challenges. So we are ahead of the prolonged uh, fight against uh, COVID-19. So taking this opportunity, I'd like to uh, make some uh, presentations. And first of all, I'd like to tell you this sentence. In times of uncertainty, let the fact or data be your guide. So we need to look at the uh, accumulated data uh, gained so far, and also we need to think about what data we need to accumulate for the future. So according to the data analysis, uh, proactive measures uh, were successfully taken, successfully taken by Korea, and that part was well explained by Vice Minister Kim. So it's very important for Korea to successfully flatten uh, the confirmed case number curve. We, in the meantime, we could buy time to increase capacity for diagnostic testing kits. And so the flattening the curve is one of the achievements we have made so far. So this indicates that we had we had we had seen uh, less numbers of deaths. So the number of deaths in Korea is about 286 and we are maintaining that level so far. And regarding this I'd like to uh, pose some questions a little later. 
I think that actually I believe that the best decision ever made by the Korean government was to give a quick authorization for uh, the uh, diagnostic kits, testing kits uh, that is based on RT-PCR. So the test kit is based on antibodies. So and uh, in uh, so uh, thanks to this, in the early days of infection, we were able to identify confirmed cases, and also it was confirmed that there are asymptomatic uh, patients. So our Korean data was, you know, was a good a big contribution to making the world know uh, the possibility that there are asymptomatic patients. However, uh, because of the testing kit, there were uh, we. Uh, are experiencing some problems because you know, there was a high school student who visited the Lutte World, the amusement park. And uh, so uh, the, the, our test kits are able to discover dead viruses as long as uh, the virus uh, has RNA. So um, it was reported by the news media that uh, the confirmed case was a repositivity case uh, even after being recovered. However, so because this sparked a controversy uh, because you know uh, it, it is said that the repositivity is causing social cost. However, the KCDC was able to prove that uh, that was not the case of repositivity, and they could discover through the testing that. That kind of result was found due to the dead virus because the test kit is able to discover even the dead virus. But we need to look back on what happened and we need to prevent the recurrence of the same uh, event. I think that recovered persons and recovered cases and can uh, serve as a shield for our antibodies. Uh, COVID-19 is not an ended uh, pandemic yet. Historically, when you take a look at the history, and it is really hard to find any cases of the uh, any cases in pandemic where we uh, definitely could be able to say that we have put an end to a uh, pandemic. So we sometimes I, I believe that we are losing sight of the importance of clinical tests. In, uh, as for the cases of Daegu and Gyeongbuk area, we classified patients into mild cases and the severe cases. But if we did that at an earlier stage, um, earlier than that, we could have been able to come up with the other measures. For example, you know that will that would have quickened the process of developing necessary drug. And what if uh, we could? gain and collect all the genomic data. So if that was uh, possible, we could have presented more scientific data to the world community. However, those parts are something that we are missing. And uh, even now, I think that the health authorities should take necessary measures in collaboration with the scientists. So another important thing is this, as you see on the slide. We used to pay attention only to infected people, but what matters uh, as well uh, is the data of the dead people. Uh, so uh, we paid more attention to the only the confirmed cases, and we, I think it is necessary for us to pay more attention to the number of deaths and to the data concerning the dead. So this is the, uh, the developments of uh, the patients in ICU in New York Hospital. And they um, accumulated the data. So they looked at the data of 394 people. And uh, when you take a look at the data, you can easily know that you know, what kind of patients came into the hospital. The reason why I am showing you this is that I want to tell you this kind of data is very important. So we need to collect and uh, gain this kind of data. And once we collect the data, we need to disclose the data to the public. Uh, so this will contribute to making the citizens know better or understand better of the situations and we will be able to making uh, Korea uh, into an advanced nation if we share all together and share this kind of data. So we need to make preparations for 
uh, the symptoms of the patients, uh, mild his symptoms and uh, the seriously ill symptoms. So I think that it is necessary to think that our goal is not put an end to the pandemic. So we need to manage the death rate. We need to uh, manage the mortality rate. And of course, vaccine or the drug development is required. But you know, we need to identify the correlations between the pandemic and the underlying medical problems. And this is the recent data available. And uh, uh, cancer patients, they have uh, five times higher uh, mortality rate than the other patients. And um, we cannot tell uh, every details in a clear manner. However, once we find this kind of data, we need to identify and analyze that so that we can uh, promote uh, the education of people on, the pa on this pandemic. This is another important piece of information. In the era of this pandemic, we have uh, shadowed uh, areas. So this is the, uh, what was reported by the New York Times, and this is the New York data. And as you see here uh, in uh, the part highlighted in red, so these is the data between COVID-19 patients and non-COVID-19 uh, patients in ICUs. Why is this data important? Because people are not going into the hospital. That indicates the possibility that even if there's a person infected, they are not going to the hospital, and uh, at later stage, they find they find that they are infected. So this are inflicting. This is inflicting more damages to the society. So the COVID-19 is not the major important content uh, alone. We should think about the medical staff. We should think about the situations of hospitals and also the infected people in uh, the hospitals, so non-COVID-19 patients as well. And uh, this is the information, uh, which is the same as what was shown, what is shown on KCDC website. And this is the data from the website of the Blue House. And these kind of numbers and figures are well presented, and data uh, about numbers and figures is released and disclosed through the website, press release, and, and so on. So this uh, number and figure data is important, and uh, analyzing this uh, data will enable us to think about what kind of countermeasures we need to take. So, but this is the, like step one. Just talking about numbers and figures uh, is step one. I think. We need to move beyond that. Uh, those involved in the health authorities, you know, they did a good job so far, but now it's time uh, for us to move uh, beyond this step. So uh, we need to go further uh, in our response to COVID-19. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Professor Yi hyun -soo. So now we will have the discussion the Vice Minister Kim gang nip Director General Chun yong il and the Professor Cha sang Gyun and Professor Yeon soo please come up to the stage for the discussion. We do not have much time for a discussion, but since we have uh, people that it's uh, really difficult to gather around all this important figure. So let's have a really meaningful discussion. Professor Yeon Suk, do you have any discussions to make? While listening to the presentation of Vice Minister Kim Gang Nip, I was also very much touched and impressed by how much the Korean government has been putting so much effort in its battle against COVID-19. And the Vice Minister, Kim gang nip you're presenting and so giving the briefing. And that makes the public feel really assured. And the, also the head of KCDC makes a briefing. And that makes the public really feel assured and feel safe. And since I'm working with uh, young students and I get a lot of feedback from them, I'm, I'm feeling fatigued every, uh, because every day I'm getting a lot of new updates on the COVID-19. People think that it will be over in a month or a few. So from now on, I think the briefing 
should be changed a bit. Rather than just providing the transparent information, I think it should provide uh, more information on how prepared we are at the medical facility and what kind of prevention measures that we should take. And for delivery and the logistics, and we, we have um, it will be okay for people who are working from home. But for those who have to interact with the people physically, who have to work uh, many different part-time jobs, they are at risk. And it, it's a really tough for the healthcare professional who are now working with the protective um, equipment because it's uh, now getting hotter as we are moving into the summer. So just like the, what Merkel did in Germany, how about we approach a bit differently and provide a bit different information daily to build a national consensus among the Korean public on how we should approach um, in our responding to the COVID-19. So your response, Vice Minister, uh, I'm not really good at giving the brief response. Yes, yeah, since the very early stage, when we provide briefing, what we focused most was provide the as accurate information as possible really fast so that we can ease the instability and anxiety people have about the virus. And second, there were some new knowledge that we obtain every day and we developed the measures, response measures daily based on that new information. So changed measures, um, how we will give the information on such changed measures, um, that was the priority that we had. And up until now, I believe that it was quite well received by the public. So, and the Koreans were cooperating voluntarily. So the government did not have to lock down everything and the citizens cooperated really well in their social distancing. So, and so without having the entire lockdown, we were able to mitigate the pandemic. But since this moment that we have to approach a bit differently, as you said, the government, what the government is considering is that there might be the second wave of COVID-19. So we have to prepare for that. And if this becomes prolonged, how we will sustain over the long term. Yes, the mitigating the pandemic and the mitigating the damages will be the right approach. So while efficiently using the resources that we have, we should reduce the death rate as much as possible. So the government, within the resources that it has, it will try its best. And for the medical support, the approach should be a bit different from the early stages up until now. Of even with the limited medical resources, that we focused mainly on the Daegu and some regions in North Gyeongsang province. But from now on, we have to make it sustainable and over the long term. And the, lastly, what's most important is the delivering the data uh, so that it can be easily understood by the public and sh share the result of the epidemiological study should not be the only information that we are giving to the public. So we've recently made a bit changes in our information in our briefing. If you look at the briefing of the minister on Sunday, uh, the minister review the measures of the last two weeks. So the weekly review is made in the briefing and the one week, one week or two week strategies are shared. And today I was supposed to give a briefing, but through the Wednesday briefing, we do the interim evaluation and what are the measures taken by the government were mainly presented. And the briefing by KCDC were mainly about the epidemiological studies and the clinical data. And for some time that we will continue the such method in our briefing. But I believe in their daily life, 
the public should be aware that what are the measures, prevention measures that they can take take in daily life. Then that I believe will really help us mitigate the pandemic and the effects of the pandemic because it will not be over soon. Then we need the smart approach in delivering the briefing to the public so that the public can utilize the data and the information more efficiently in their daily life. Thank you very much. Due to the time constraint, I might not be able to uh, give the wrap-up comments, but I will now give the microphone to the Sang Yun. So I'd like to ask a question to uh, Mr. Chan Yong Il from the Statistics Research Institute. And a few days ago, actually, the uh, Mr. Song Yong Yong, uh, the uh, president of the uh, Economic Council, Economic and Humanities and Science uh, Council of Korea, uh, talked about a person who is very important. And according to him, actually, it was Mr. Chun Yong Il. And uh, I heard that at the time, uh, it was several months ago. At the time, I heard from him that Mr. Chun Yong Il, the head of the Statistics Research Institute, was working working on collaborating with the Canadian researchers for predictive modeling. But there are differences between different cultures and uh, between different cities and be between different nations. So how do you reflect those differences in your data when you do the predictive modeling? So thank you for the uh, question. It was such an important question. In fact, I am an American, so I am. Uh, my my hair is uh, black. However, actually, I am an American. So I used to work in the United States, but I came back to Korea a year ago for the development of the nation and for the development of the think tank, and for the development of fact tank. So that's the nickname of the Statistics Research Institute. I came back and I am working as the head of the Statistics Research Institute. Accurate data needs to be worked out in a speedy manner, and that's the work done by the Statistical Research Institute of Korea. So um, during the presentation, I told you at the end of my presentation, saying that there would be uh, further questions. And let me tackle those questions in the Q&A session. That's what I mentioned. In fact, for the modeling work, IDI methodology is needed. In fact, ID um, methodology just needs SIR. The thou methodology does not need much or a lot of data. Even with the daily numbers of confirmed cases, you can run the IDEA prediction modeling. In fact, the IDEA methodology has a history of almost 100 years. So that is a, such a solid methodology. So with the limited amount of data, you still can make predictions. But if you have more variants, you need to adopt a more specialized methodology. But it requires more time. But when it comes to decision-making process, we need to move in a speedy manner. So that's why we are using IDEA methodology with limited amount of data. Of course, in the process, we do a lot of discussion with the KCDC, Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So in the process, in the discussion, if we find out there is a need to identifying additional data, now we have a discussion and we uh, try to find ways to work it out. And also, um, I'd like to talk about the importance of doing uh, what is called antibody survey. So I already made a suggestion to the KCDC or the health authorities to do such a survey in order to measure the status or the conditions of the asymptomatic patients. We cannot just look at the numbers and figures that are available currently. Across the nation, it is necessary to scientific clean measure of the asymptomatic patients. And now the KCDC is working on that. They are collecting data in a randomized survey. Once the result of the survey comes out, they can be leveraged for many um, events. 
for example, uh, by region, by demographics, we can uh, come up with the statistics of the asymptomatic patients, and also we can measure the exact death rate. So far, uh, we could just obtain the case with mortality rate only, but we can, but uh, with uh, the survey results that will come out, we'll be able to measure the exact numbers of death of asymptomatic patients. And what is important as well is to leverage clinical data. By using the clinical data, we can know the conditions of mild cases, severe cases, and sev critically ill cases. And we can make a correlations between the conditions of patients and the uh, uh, underlying medical problems. So some portions of the mild cases are turned into severe cases, and some of the severe cases are turned into critically ill cases. If we take, ad take advantage of AI-based methodology, we can um, take proactive measures for improving the conditions of patients because, because we will be able to know the, uh, the symptoms or the possible symptoms of patients in advance by using the AI-based modeling. So that's the work that we would like to work on in the future. So if that is possible or if that kind of AI-based science-based um, science science methodology is possible, if the machine learning is used in the future, we will be better respond to whatever comes up, including future pandemics. So that will be possible if we leverage clinical data better than now. And lastly, the point that I want to make is that not only in terms of health, but also in terms of economy, we need data. With um, preventive and control measures in place, we need to make measurements not only in terms of the health uh, sector, but also in the economic sector. Big data is based on AI methodologies, so we will be able to make economic measurements in more or less a week once we put in the data. So these are the things that we need to complement for the future. So we need data in terms of health, or health-related facilities or health-related policies. But on the other hand, we need ec economy-related data as well. And uh, so that kind of uh, data will be very important for us to feel the effects of the measures that we are taking in our society. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have one minute left for a discussion. I have a really short question to Vice Minister Kim Gang Nip. While those of us who are watching us online, there might be concern over the p possible second wave, and there is a uh, concerns over that there is uh, only the 30 or the 40 the negative pressure rooms left at the in the metropolitan area. So, what your stance on this? So we're monitoring in real time and making the prediction in real time. In Daegu, we had uh, exponential growth in infected cases, and we did the nationwide simulation back then. And what we need the most, as expected by the public, what we need, uh, and what we have is a bit different from back then. 80% of the patient with the mild symptoms can be treated even if the specialized medical attention is paid. So that's the statistic that we have. And 5% becomes really serious. So in the really the serious scenarios that we do have the medical resources and the healthcare professional available for them, and we do had a mock test and a mock simulation to prepare for the possible sec second wave. So through such measures and the simulations, we are preparing for the potential serious, the second wave. But compared with the past, compared with the before, now the public has a better understanding of the virus, and now the citizens know how they can live with the virus. 
But if we let our guard down, there might be the small cluster infections. Then the disease might, the virus might spread through such a small cluster infections. Then the situation might get really serious. But we can mitigate the pandemic through the sustained the measures. Thank you very much for your response. That was a quite reliable response. And as you can see that this forum is broadcast online, both in Korean and English, via YouTube and Neighbor TV. And we have a question collected from the YouTube live chat box. And we would like to ask the question from there. And I can read the questions. So I will choose the question. It's a question raised by the Shiganga from YouTube. And why you are not doing the antibody diagnostic test? If there is the asymptomatic transmission, why you are not doing the uh, antibody diagnostic test? I think the Professor Yeon Suk might respond better to this question. But the, when we do the PCR diagnostic test, that Professor e e elaborated on the good strength of the PCR test, it's based on the gene characteristics and to find whether such characteristics can be found within the body, even if there are no symptoms. And before the antibody uh, appears within the body, that we can see whether this person is infected with a virus. So that is the most uh, for sure way of diagnosing the COVID-19. So that's why we're using the PCR diagnostic kit. But as a supplementary kit that we can use the antibody diagnostic test for emergencies or if there is a massive uh, transmission, suspected transmission cases. It takes uh, six hours to for isolation. So if we need to do the emergency test, uh, massive emergency test, then we might be able to introduce the antibody diagnostic tests. So the KCDC and the government, uh, the health authorities are reviewing whether we should also introduce the antibody diagnostic kits. And there is another question. Here is another question. I think that this question is related to our daily life. So for, for example, there was a case, confirmed case of Russian sailors in, on the ship. So what kind of uh, countermeasure should be taken by Busan? Please tell me. We mainly focused on the air airlines. So uh, I think we was not able to pay proper attention to this Russian cargo ship case. So the captain who was infected from the, uh, the starting point, he got off from the ship. And that information was sent from the Russian health authorities to the Korean government, was supposed to be shared. But that process was a bit slow. So the entry, the quarantine test, and we're doing it uh, in only in some limited cases, only for the countries with a high risk. But the Russia was not on that list, list of a high risk countries. So that's why. And secondly, at the port, there were some the the points that we were not able to capture properly at the port. And the KCDC, together with the relevant ministry, are now, uh, made a briefing together. So we will strengthen the quarantine, the quarantine inspections, and the measures that can be adopted under the current law that will be implemented. And for example, that if the information is not shared properly, then the follow-up measures will be implemented. So that was the, what, uh, what was shared through the morning briefing today. So it was shared 
through the today's morning briefing. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the answer. So now next question goes to um, Mr. Chun. So when will and uh, so when will COVID-19 end? So is it going to be by the end of this year or next year? So until that time, should we continue doing individual quarantine discipline? Actually, this involves uh, a lot of uh, several elements. We cannot decide the ending time. It is up to the COVID-19, the coronavirus. So in some cases, in when we make certain decisions or decide something, and we all, we sometimes have misconception, misconception that the way will go in our way. However, in case of coronavirus, that's very different from flu. And, but what if coronavirus comes along with the other flu or other epidemic? For example, in fall, in autumn, if coronavirus comes together with the flu all together at the same time, that will cause a confusion among medical staffs, inclu including doctors. So how to respond to that kind of situations is being discussed and is being prepared by uh, the KCDC and other relevant gov government agencies, I believe. And that's the part that we need to uh, work on for the future. And the another thing is that when we take a look at the data of modeling, Vice Minister just uh, talked about the imported cases. Sometimes uh, the media reports the numbers and figures with the imported cases and domestic cases combined together. So that can provide a misleading information to the public. In reality, when it comes to imported cases, the Central Disease Control Headquarters is strictly managing those numbers and they are managing the data related to imp imported cases separately. But we should avoid making an interpretation, looking at the combined numbers all together. I really hope that the media, when they make a coverage, I hope that they can report based on scientific numbers. So in reality, we can, it can be said that we are in a situation where uh, imported cases are well limited and well managed by the uh, government authorities. Now it is expected that another wave may come to Korea at the end of June. And then after that, we will go into the stabilization mode. So after ups, downs will come, this kind of up and down will continue in a repetitive cycle. So such small waves will continuously come until we are able to con uh, contain the pandemic. So if the general public is good at you know, managing their life and managing the situation, experiencing ups and downs, and adjusting themselves to that situation, I think that there would be a big uh, difficulties for general public uh, when they actually face another pandemic in the future. So I think that actually we need to think about future possibilities. And I understand uh, where you come from, the, the person who uh, questioned this answer, uh, qu uh, who questioned uh, this uh, thing. But I think that as long as we are uh, good at uh, managing small waves, you know, as long as we practice well, we will be able to deal with the bigger one in the future. So if I may summarize the question, I'm I'm running a hair shop in the Hongdae, the Hong Hongik University neighborhood, but because of the COVID-19, it's a it's a really difficult for me to sustain my business, and even I'm not able to pay the rent for my hair salon. So, about the economic ramification of the COVID-19, what are the measures uh, the government thinks of? Yeah, it's a really the terrible virus that is having a serious economic ramifications that uh, 
the virus is really affecting us heavily in terms of economy, but we cannot address that issue within a short term. So within the range that we can control, where you should sus we should sustain the everyday life. So that's the inevitable choice that we have to make. When we succeed in prevention and control of the virus, then we can resume our economic activities and the e economic reduce the economic ratifications. So based on the foundation that is led by the prevention and the control measures, that economic activities will slowly be resumed. So at the government, the d many different measures are all b also being considered for the economic measure as well. The money, uh, the allowance has been provided for the every citizen and for small businesses. And the seed money has been provided. But in the future, going forward, the how we can revitalize the economy will be discussed. And just like the uh, let's go together sales that is going to kick off, that various measures will be taken by the government. And you might feel the effect a bit later. And you might feel it a bit differently depending on what industry and what business that you're doing. There might be the, my, the, the sectors that are affected most heavily by the pandemic that we will put the priority on such factors. I hope that we can continue the discussion, but we do have the time allotment uh, for the session. So that was it for the discussion and the Q&A session. Thank you very much. So this concludes the first session. And the presenters' discussions play remain seated, and we will have a 10-minute break and resume session two. And in session two, the countries and the states after the COVID-19 outbreak will be presented and discussed. We're a bit uh, uh, behind the schedule, so what time should we resume the session? We will take a just a five-minute five break and resume the session at 3.20.